Hey, 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 Marshawn Alanio here, your favorite shift relationship strategist. Welcome back. We are talking about how to fix the communication in your relationship. Now, communication is one of the things that is one of the foundational pieces of relationships. And when we do not have this one thing together, this one thing is what destroys relationships. This one thing is what keeps relationships together. This one thing is what seemingly uh, creates healthiness to a relationship. So communication is one of the foundational pieces that creates a relationship, whether it's healthy or whether it's toxic. Communication is the thing that happens and can happen and will happen in your relationship one way or the other, whether you are good at it, whether you're bad at it, or whether you are somewhere in the middle at relationship and communication within your relationship. Everyone falls somewhere on that spectrum. So without further ado, let's jump into the first one. The first thing that you have to do in order to fix the communication within your relationship is to figure out your feelings. Process your feelings about the situation, about the thing that was said, the thing that was done, so you can calm down before, please hear me, before you go and speak to your spouse about whatever it is that they did, say it, didn't do, promise, broke promise, et cetera. Whatever it is that has you about to boil over and actually commit a crime against your spouse, I need for you to simmer down because jail and prison ain't sexy. It's not. So get your emotional, get, get your emotions back into center. Go calm down, take you a walk, listen to some music, journal out your feelings, but process what is going on with you because you can only control you, sis. You can't control what your spouse is doing or not doing, saying or not saying, promising or not promising. You cannot control any of that the only person that you have control over is yourself. And let me even throw this free information in there because a lot of people think that they can control their ch child or children. You can't even control them. Yes, for a small period of time when, you, when they are in the training phases and you are raising them the way that they should go, yes, you are controlling them. But when they're not, when they away from you, trust me, because just like you and I, did our own thing when we were out of our parents' eye. Your child or children is doing this exact same thing. So you don't even have control over your children. We have to raise them in the way that they should go. And hopefully, prayerfully, they will follow those footsteps. So process how you feel first so you can calm down before you think about having the conversation about your feelings with your spouse. Process those feelings. The second thing I want you to take into account is to use I statements. Now, I statements state how you feel because we're not mind readers. We cannot read the minds of our spouse, the things that we think that they were thinking at the time. You don't know. You don't know because there are so many other things that pop into our head that's in and out, just thoughts that run through our mind. And I can't remember the number of thoughts that we think every single day is a whole lot. So just because you think that they're thinking about the thing that you're thinking about doesn't mean that they're thinking about the thing that you're thinking about. Did you get that? It doesn't mean that. So use I statements based off the way that you feel about the topic at hand. So say, for instance, your spouse yelled at you for whatever reason. You get triggered when you hear this yelling. The voice is raised. You feel, you actually feel like a child back in your parents' home and you didn't like it then, nor do you like it now. So instead of you hearing more of what he's actually saying, you automatically pop off and start to react because you are reverting back to that incident. Most people don't understand trauma. When, when you are experiencing that thing, that thing that triggered you, you are really no longer, yes, physically your body is there, but where your mind is, you're literally at the place that your trauma took place. Yeah, so because that happens, you have to use I statements for yourself. I feel horrible 
when you yell at me because literally I feel like I am a child back at my parents' home. I don't like being yelled at because literally I cannot see anything but red. So we have to figure out, you see, you see I did that. We have to figure out, not you, we have to figure out what's a better solution for you to be able to get me to do the thing that you really want me to do versus yelling at me. Yelling triggers me. Yelling does not make me listen. Yelling makes me see red. So now what can we do? Right? So I statements. I felt bad. I feel like I'm a child. I get triggered. You're talking about all you. You are talking about all you. You're not talking about him. And also, did you notice I did not blame anything? I did not shame anything. I did not guilt anything. I talk all about me. That's what you have to do. You talk all about you, all about your feelings, all about the issue. That's a side note, but let me give you this free tidbit here. A lot of times when we have arguments, when we're trying to communicate and go and talk to our spouse about the thing that made us mad, we have a tendency to go very argumentative with the head popping, the body language is all off, and then we wonder why our spouse is now defensive toward what we're saying. But you don't realize how you're showing up. So instead of blaming, shaming, making the other person feel guilty, again, stick to you because you know how you feel. You may think and believe that you know what the other person was feeling or even what they were thinking in that moment, but the truth of the matter is you really don't know. You don't know. The only person that you truly know about is you, sis. That's it. So stick to you. Stick to you and things will go a lot smoother. Number three is to pick the right time. It's all about timing. It, you don't want to have a conversation and you don't want to communicate your feelings. You don't want to open up that door unless the other person is also ready to receive the information that you are ready to give. It's all about the timing for the both of you, not for one of you. Because here's what we have a tendency to do. Just because I've been thinking about this thing all day, I might have even been thinking about this thing for a week or weeks at a time. Now I'm ready to get this thing out. I'm ready to say it. I'm ready to tell you what I feel because I process, I process, I thought, and I'm still angry. And now I need to get this out in this moment. But you're not realizing that it's not all about you. Just because you're ready to explode like a volcano and get your spouse to hear what you have to say doesn't mean that they're ready to take in information and process it and come up with a solution for said information, said problem, said issue that you are putting out on the table. So make sure that the timing is not just about you. Simply ask, is this a good time? Or can we set up a time because I have something that I want to talk to you about? Is it an hour better for you? Can we talk about it right now? Like that way you are opening up the door to communicate what time? Because you know that being in a healthy relationship is not all about what one person wants to do. It's about the both of you. It's about you two looking at this as a team. It's about you evaluating how you are showing up and how that's going to be received by your spouse before you even go. Before you even go. So paying attention to the right timing will absolutely help you to fix the communication problems within your relationship. Four, when you go and have the conversation, this now this particular one does not have to happen every single time. However, if you know that there are some flaws that you have or some mishaps that have happened in the past that you need to apologize for, then you need to go and do that. These, these are my flaws. OK, so the flaw that I could have, and you know what, this is what I heard when I was dating. So I'll use this. The flaw that I had had have, excuse me, because this is present tense, right? The flaw that I have is. I literally like to be around you all the time, and some people might call this clingy. I 
am working on this area because I understand now that you may need some me time and I have to be okay with you needing your me time. You see, it's all about me, but I'm also saying this is my flaw. The second part of that is to apologize because you apologizing because you're not always going to do right in this particular area. This thing will be one of the, the, the biggest things that you keep reverting back to because this is your comfort level. So because, because I'm clingy, again, this really wasn't the past, but this is my example. So because I was clingy, I told my partner I'm clingy, right? And so now I'm saying, hey, forgive me for my clinginess right now because although I'm working through this, and on this, I am aware that I do this does not mean that it's not going to show up in the future because I'm still working on it. I have not mastered this. I have not mastered this. So it is going to come up. So recognize and you have to be aware of the flaw or flaws that you already bring to the table. Let them know I'm working on this. I'm working through this. Right. You got the flaw and then apologize because you know that you are going to revert back at some point point that way they are aware when you do say a thing so in my particular example my partner is going to realize when i start to get super clingy and not happy when i'm not going with him or whatever not to say he's going to take it well but even after he leaves and he like ah, dang, she did tell me that she gets clingy right now he's able to handle my clinginess a lot better because he's aware of it it's not to say it's going to go well every time but he's aware of it right and you have to be aware of how you are showing up too tip number five is to make compromises and then focus on resolutions to the goals so let's talk about compromise a lot of people think that compromising is not receiving what they want in that moment. It's partially true. Compromise is simply this. Instead of one of the parties in the relationship getting a 100% of what they want and the other person getting zero, what you do is say, okay, say for instance, you want to go to a football game and the other person is a homebody. They just want to stay home. So how are both of you going to win? Now, this is what compromise really looks like. Compromise is, okay, how about we go to the game for the first half and then we can come home and chill. So both of you are winning, but also both of you are getting what you want. You want to go to the game. He wants to stay home. You can go to the game for a few hours. You might not see the whole thing, or you can go to the latter part of it, whatever floats your boat, right? Go to the game partially then come home and relax. Both of you are winning. Or another suggestion is go to the game, watch the game in the entire time. And then if and when, who cares what comes up next? Guess what? The next time we are doing something, we are hanging out at the house. It is chill time. Again, win-win. You get to go and watch the entire game and he gets to chill. The next time you want to go somewhere, who gives a hoot what's going on? I want to hang out at the house. Both of y'all win. That is what a real compromise actually looks like. The other scenario where one person does it and the other person gets nothing is losing. It is not a win. It's only a win for one person. And after a while, that one person keeps winning, it gets old. So I'm feeling like I'm just giving and this person feels like I'm just getting taken advantage of. We don't want that. We're trying to fix the communication. We're trying to be better in our relationships. We're trying to be better in our marriages. So compromise, compromise. And then the second half of that is to focus on the goals. Focus on your goals and, and specifically um, the resolutions to the issues. Resolve the issues and what is the goal, right? That's kind of simultaneously hand in hand of what is going on. What is going on, y'all? Okay. So number six, the sixth way to fix the relation, the communication in your relationship is to pick your battles. Pick your battles, but then 
don't just sweep everything else underneath the rug. You want to pick your battles because you don't want to be the nag. You don't want to feel like you have to complain or bring up every single thing that you feel that they are doing you wrong in some type of way. Not every time. Not every time. What you want to do is say, okay, that one's not a big deal. That one's not a big deal. That one right there, this one is going against my morals. This one is going against my values. Those are the ones that you attack, that you nip in the bud right away. But picking your battles, you don't have to complain about the tooth, toothpaste top not being on all the time. Do you really have to complain about that all the time? Probably not. Unless that is one of your uh, uh, values and morals. I mean, maybe it is. If it's something that it, it is your moral or value, then it should be a big deal, including the cap being put back on the toothpaste. So it just depends. Just depends, right? So you have to realize what's actually happening and then really choose your battles. Not nitpicking. Not complaining about every single solitary thing. We're not doing that. We're fixing the communication, our relationship. And then we're also understanding that nobody's perfect. It's not even you, boo. Not me. None. The only person that was perfect was Jesus. That's it. All the rest of us have some flaws. We got some areas that we need to improve in. We got some apologies that need to happen. We got some forgiveness that needs to happen for ourselves as well as for others. Like it's a whole slew of things that need to happen in order for us to be better. So don't look at him as not being perfect because, boo, you're not perfect. None of us are perfect. None of us. So pick your battles. Don't be a nag. But also don't sweep those important things under the rug because you will regret sweeping them under the rug the rug. You don't want to do that. The seventh and final thing on how to fix the communication in your relationship is to ask more and more questions. Keep asking questions. Keep getting to know your spouse. Keep getting to try to understand why they do certain things, why they show up a certain way, why don't they like, you know, the 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 the, the, the toilet seat up. I don't know. Whatever. Ask more questions and not yes or no questions. These have to be questions that are open-ended as they say. I like to call them thought-provoking questions because they cannot just give you a yes or no question, yes or no answer. They have to sit there, think about it, which is the thought, think about it, and then it's more than a one word answer. This is how we truly get to know one another, asking questions beyond how was your day. However, if you don't do that, because I do know some couples that don't even ask, how was your day? They automatically, you come to the door and they got a list of things for you to do. Like, can you simmer down? Can you say hi? Hello? How are you? How was your day? Can we hug? Can we kiss? Like, you already sending me back out. Like, and I do know some couples like that. So ask more questions, but get beyond the superficial. Get beyond how was your day? Thought provoking. You know, you brought up that goal a few months ago or a year ago. Whatever happened with that? Like, what happened? Did you just throw it away? Are you still thinking about it? Has the solution not happened for you? Like, going deeper. We got to get deeper so we can understand and see who the other person is across the table from us or lying next, next to us or creating children, family with. Communication is essential to every relationship. So this particular one, you can take beyond your romantic relationship. We communicate with our child or children. We communicate with our employer. We include and communicate with our employees. We communicate with our siblings. We communicate with our friends, with our associates. We communicate with everybody that we come in contact with. So we have to be better at communicating our wants, our needs, our desires, our goals, our aspirations, our flaws. We have to be great at all of those things because this essential key to every 
healthy relationship, including but not limited to your romantic relationship, is the key. It is. It's the key. Communication is the key. And I know that you heard that saying before. It may be cliche, but it's also true. It's also true. Communication is what a lot of us are lacking. And guess what? A lot of people divorce because they cannot communicate. At least one of the parties in the relationship, when the divorce happens, is communication. Couldn't do it or chose not to do it, whether fearful or whether they didn't think it was important enough. Whatever the case may be, communication comes up all the time as to a downfall to relationships and specifically to marriages. You are listening to Love Restored. I am your host, Marshawn Olanio. Thank you so much for taking these 30 minutes out of your day to be here with me because it makes a difference to not only come to Love Restored, to not only listen to the brownstone, to get the information that you need, to be better in your life, to be better in your relationship, to be better for your child or children so we can continue to break these generational curses within our community. It makes a difference to listen to qualified people that have information that you may or may not have, but start to implement into your life so you can see the changes that you really want to be there. Because the only way to get the relationship and even your life that you want, you have to decide, make a decision about the things that you are willing to do and the things that you are not willing to do day in and day out. And specifically when it comes to your relationship, are you willing to do what it takes in order to get the relationship that you say that you want? 